how are you? It's Colleen of Rebel Stitcher. And as always, I'm joined by my handsome sidekick, Albus. Um, I, this is a floss tube channel about my personal cross stitch and my business known as Rebel Stitcher Designs. Um, this is floss tube number, I don't know, I forgot to look. Um, I know I've had some special edition floss tubes snuck in recently. So, um, I'll have to go in and look before I post this to see what number this is, but I don't think that's very important. Mm -hmm. I survived my first needlework marketplace. Um, it was an online wholesale show hosted by the amazing Bobby of Stitching Bits and Bobs uh, in Michigan. Mm -hmm. If you guys are looking for a needlework shop, I can't give Bobby enough credit. She was absolutely amazing through this whole process. And um, it was great. I got a lot of orders um, and a lot of the orders were for shops that haven't previously carried my work. So that was exciting. Um, in my prior video, I showed you the new releases for Marketplace. Um, those will be exclusive to the shops that attended Marketplace for about 30 days and then I will have them on my website and um, at distributors like Hoffman and also um, they'll also be at the retreat for sweater weather. Let's see if there's anything else I'm missing to talk about Marketplace. No, I survived. Um, there was a chat function, video chat and just regular chat in there and Nobody wanted to chat with me, none of the shop owners. So I don't know if like um, they just weren't feeling chatty or if I just have a very like don't F with me kind of face and um, you know, my Jersey abruptness <laughs> shows through. But anyway, hopefully it was great. I appreciate all the orders that were placed and I look forward to working with the um, shops that are new to carrying me. So thank you for that. Um, this video, I will be announcing the winner of this journal that I had shown, I think it was two videos ago at this point. Um, so stay tuned for that. And, um, I wanted to thank everyone for their kind comments. My daughter, Etta, who is 11 and is going into middle school this year. We have a back to school night we have to, not back to school night, open house where she can go find where all of her classes are and meet her teachers tonight. Um, she put together this amazing little like hype video for the new releases for uh, Marketplace. And I'm telling you, that girl is so creative and so talented. She's make, working as we speak on another video for um, Sampler September. So, Thank you everybody who watched it and um, your sweet comments on Instagram and on YouTube. I read them all to her and I could tell she was really proud and it meant a lot to her. So thank you as a mom, thank you for the sweet comments. Um, let's see. I don't have a ton of stitching to show you this episode. I basically just have one whip, some amazing stitchy kindness. And so what I'm going to do is do a flip through of my Prairie Schooler collection. So if you are a Prairie Schooler fan, this is a episode that you'll enjoy. If not, um, there won't be a lot of content that you like probably, but you know, you might see something you didn't know and say, hey, I'd like to watch that, uh, not watch that, stitch that. So um, first I will announce the winner. I won't make you wait to the end. I had asked people to use the word journal for to win this in a couple videos back. And the winner of this is actually somebody I know who's very sweet. You guys probably know her too from Floss Tube is Janet Jabber. So Janet, reach out to me on email or Instagram and let me get your address and I will get this out to you. Congratulations and thank you to everybody who entered to win. I didn't think ahead and um do a giveaway this time. I'll have to do one next time. Sorry. Um, so congratulations, Janet. Um, I have some pretty amazing stitchy kindness that came in the mail the other day. 
um, a woman had reached out to me and said, I have some things I want to send you to use as um, prizes and, and such for the retreat at Sweater Weather. And then she included, where did I put it? I've got stuff stashed away here that I could easily grab. Ah, here it is. That she could, she sent stuff to me to use as, to help fill baskets and, and prizes and stuff for sweater weather. And let me tell you, some of the stuff she sent is really good. So you guys will enjoy that if you're going to be at the retreat. But in addition to that, she sent a really sweet card and this little package that says um, that this was for me to keep these right here. And so the first two are Prairie Schooler cardstock because she knows I love those. Uh, this one is called Forget Me Nots. So this will, I'll put these in my little binder as I go through the flip through. But this is from 1994. So nice vintage. I did not have this one. The other one is The Four Seasons from Prairie Schooler and this is 1987 was a good year good music in 1987 and also this one which I am 99% sure I have this one so maybe when we do the flip through if I have it maybe I'll do this as a giveaway um but I'm not, I, I want to confirm that before I commit so thank you and then the piece de resistance of the goodies that Liz had sent me are you ready for this look at that Frenchie chart I love it. She says, well, she has a Frenchie named Cosmo. So Cosmo, hello from Albus and I. And she says she stitched this a while back. It's by a Pegasus publication designed by Stephanie Seabrook Hedgepath. I have never seen this. I love it. And I will definitely have to stitch my boy Albus. So thank you, Liz. You know, it was so generous of you. And, you know, right off the bat... Liz is from New Jersey, so she's probably an awesome broad. Bet you she could show me where to get a good slice. So thank you, Liz. I'm sorry you're not going to be able to make the retreat this year. Hopefully you can come next year and give Cosmo um, big wet puppy kisses from us. Um, thank you so much. And those of you who are attending the retreat will definitely benefit from her generosity. Um, okay, so let me show you my one whip. And then I will go through my um, Prairie Schooler flip through. So this is the Prairie Schooler I am working on. It's called Miss Fortune. Um, let's see, does it give a date on this? 2014, this one came out. And there's a series, I think there's four of them that are this kind of quarter sheet size that they're all Halloween. And I think Nancy and I, Nancy from the Bougie Stitchers and I are gonna sell some of them together. Um, so I have already started on this one. This is on 20 Count Ada. It's a mystery from Fortnite I had in my stash. I'm stitching it with one strand. The, blank, the black is anchor black. And then let's see, the orange I think is 720. It's not the called for colors, I just picked what I had. And then this is I think like a crew or something for the um, crystal ball. I love this chart. It's so cute and little on the um, 20 count Ada. I just love it. So I've been working slowly on her. I'm going to bring her with me this weekend. We are, kids go back to school on Tuesday. And so Nicole, my wife, had rented an Airbnb on the Chesapeake Bay. Like there's a little house with a dock and stuff. And her and Walker love to fish and crab and stuff. And it's not really Etta and I's jam. So Etta asked me to take her to the art, like to Michael's basically yesterday. So she could buy some arts and crafts supplies to keep herself busy, which is just a girl after my own heart. Oh, but speaking of that, we bought this 
at Michael's. It's a giant rubber toad. Um, he had to come home with us, right? Like, it, it's just epic. So um, I saw it in the Halloween decorations and I was like, oh, I love this. I have a thing for toads in real life. I just really love them. I love when I find a toad. Um, and I was like, oh my God, I love it. And then Ed is like, you need that mommy, buy it. So it didn't take much convincing. So if you're looking for a giant toad in your life, Michael's is the place to find one. Um, we've named her Inez and she moves around the house. Edda and I move her around the house. So there you go. There's Inez. Um, okay. So I think that's all the business I have. I am going to, I don't know how this is quite going to work, but I'm going to flip through my Prairie Schooler collection. 99% of them are on cardstock. There's some that are on the paper that I just have not found. This is by far not a complete collection, but um, I pick them up on Stash and Load when I see ones I don't have. And um, Prairie Schooler is just, I've said it before a bunch of times, if I was stuck on a desert island and could only stitch one designer, it would be Prairie Schooler. There's just something about the simplicity and the positive and negative space, the way they play with it. It just soothes my rattled brain. And um, it's just comfort stitching to me. So I have a lot of oldies and goodies in here. So first of all, it lives in this green binder. If you knew me and knew what a shit show my office slash stitchy room is, you would be impressed by this because literally all my other charts are just like randomly thrown in bins and haphazard and there's no rhyme or reason. I don't have a spreadsheet. I don't have any sort of system. It's just haphazard. So these are super special charts to me that I put in a binder. Okay. They're all in plastic and I feel like, will there be a glare if I show it to you that way? The first two are little, these little cards that they used to, LNSs used to give them out back in the day. Um, this one was a gift from my friend Barb, who is the amazing owner of Keepsakes. And this one I have just picked up. They don't give them out free anymore. You have to pay for these. But um, so these are my first two. I guess I need to take them out of the plastic is what I'm figuring out. The next ones are all a part of the same series uh, size wise that misfortune, the one I'm working on. This one is called Knock Knock. And I'll try to tell you the years all these came out. This one is 2012. And then Night Fright. This is 2015. And Double Double. Look at those witches. That's 2013. I, okay, there's so much I love about this one. These crazy cats. This bat is like frog and those skulls. Um, I think this might be the next one from my that series that I stitch. And then the last one is Who's There? So Misfortune and then all of these. And they all are the same, um, they all fit on the same kind of size fabric. So these, I will conquer eventually, all of those. And some of these I've stitched, some of these I've just stitched some of them. Um, the next one is number one, why am I opening that up? 156, called Boo To You. This is just a classic, um, Christmas, oh, Christmas, I'm losing my mind. Uh, Halloween smalls, they make great little ornaments. I have a bunch of ornament trees that I put up um, for Halloween that are like spooky trees. So I've made a lot of different, I don't think I've done any of this one. I really wanna do that cat that says yow. But I don't think I've stitched any of these yet. This one came out in 2009. So, 
This one I have stitched. And the larger one is right there. And this is from book number 165, Sweeping Cobwebs. This is just a freaking classic. These cats with these pumpkins on there. Oh, just perfection. And then there's also this smaller chart. I have not stitched this one yet. And this one came out in 2010, Sweeping Cobwebs. That I think is just quintessential Prairie Schooler Halloween. Now Prairie Schooler Halloween is my favorite of all of them, but honestly, all Prairie Schooler is just, I mean, not on. I'm not gonna lie, I don't like all Prairie Schooler, but I like a lot. Cats, Bats, and Witches, book number 174. I do not believe I have stitched any out of this yet. No, I have not. But look at this tree with these crazy branches and the owl sitting in there. And it says, hey ho, for Halloween pumpkins everywhere, cats and bats and witches are flying through the air. Great, love this one. This next one was a gift from my friend Jen. She had stitched this and um, I was coveting it and she gave it to me after she stitched it. This is from 2012, and it's All Hallows' Eve, and I love, see this is what I'm talking about, the positive and negative space, the way they did this pathway, you see that was just like alternating stitches, that's freaking genius, it, it's just so simple and so smart all at once, so I love this one. I was with Jen when she picked out the frame for it. For hers anyway and um it looked great this one i do not have on um cardstock this is a paper jobber and this is book number 188 trick or treat i have stitched these two smalls and have those as ornaments in my house and this originally came out in 2013 I feel like I need to pick up the paces. This is gonna take forever. Maybe I'll just do the Halloween. Heads up, book number 181. Heads up. Um, I did this grave that says, uh-oh, because that is just freaking hilarious. Um, but they're just classic. Oh, and then on the back, I don't wanna show you, but there's another headstone. So I did this one and the uh-oh. So I have lots more I can do. Perfect ornaments and smalls. They're just amazing. This is another one. Excuse me, sir. Teenage interruption. Um, this is another one I don't have on cardstock, but I have um, that I would like to get. This is called Hocus Pocus. I love all of these and I have stitched a cover the charts these two on the back the one that says gaze and spooky see that up there those two um i might do that big one one time that would look really nice boo moon is the next one this is book number 189 now I have yeah. stitched almost all of these. I think this was the first Prairie Schooler Halloween that I ever stitched. Um, Barb at Keepsakes has these individually finished in an old antique candelabra and I fell in love with it. And she had an extra candelabra. So when I stitched mine, um, she finished it the same way for me. And I bring that out and put on the mantle every Halloween. Um, uh, the candelabra didn't have enough spots for every one of these, so I couldn't do them all, so I kind of picked and cho chose my favorites. But um, Boo Moon, that is a goodie. The next one, let's see, I jump to number from 189 to 214, and this is not, this is another one I don't have on cardstock. It's called Halloweenies. And look at that cat right there. 
I love that cat. First of all, he looks, not only does he look scared, he looks like he's about to poop. But this is, they're so good. I need to find this on cardstock. Now, obviously, it's the same exact chart. It's just printed differently, but it's, it's my jam. Witching Hour. Now, I have stitched pieces of this one, but not the whole thing. And this is book 200, and this came out in 2015. When Witches Go Riding, this is another one I don't have the cardstock on. This came out in 2008 originally. I have not stitched anything from this, but hopefully I will soon. I could keep myself very busy just from this binder. I could stitch for the rest of my life just on this binder. And that was the last of my Halloween, um, what do you call it? Prairie Schooler charts. The rest that I have are all on cardstock. They're all various Halloween, not Halloween, I just showed you Halloween at some point. Forget me, I'll blame, brain, blame the brain damage. The rest of these are all either Christmas or other holiday seasonal things. So this is book, if you're not into this, I apologize, but Prairie Schooler people might enjoy it. This is book 81 and it's Songs of the Season. And this is obviously a winter slash Christmas one. I like this Peace on Earth and the um, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Those are really fun. And this is 1999. Okay. So this is Prairie Schooler number 83. Look at this. This was $6 in 2000. And this is called Winter Samplers. Now look at these, this here, these pine cones. Do you see those? How just, it's just so perfect. Curry schooler, man, you can't go wrong. I would like to stitch these, some of them. This is book number 86 and it's called Home for Christmas. This came out originally in 2000. I mean, look at these trees here. And I love Santa in the sleigh. I think on like a, like a taupey kind of color, but dark enough that the reindeer still pop. I love it. Love it, love it. So that is one I would like. I don't do a lot of Christmas stitching. I do a, just obviously a ton of Halloween stitching, but um I should do more because Christmas is Nicole's holiday. She loves Christmas. Um, Christmas Traditions. This is book 95 from 2001. That's a sweet one. This is called Holly Days and this is book 157. These are small similar to the Halloween style ones and this is from 2009 originally there's a sweet snowman on the back and I like this snowman with the little kid hugging him very cute now this this is one of the, this might be the first preschooler Christmas that I stitch and to all a good night this came out in 2010 and I absolutely love this one with all the homes and Santa and the reindeer in the corner. It says, and to all a good night. And then this one over here says, Merry Christmas to all. So sweet. I really want to stitch this actually. I might kit this up. That might be my project. I could go between Halloween. I can always maybe, maybe it would be a good thing to always have a Prairie Schooler Halloween and a Prairie Schooler Christmas going. And these are, oh, this one I must have actually bought at like Keepsakes or something. Oh, Prairie Schooler Christmas trees. These originally came out in 99. 
I don't know if I'll ever stitch them, but I like that tree idea when they're finished. So those are nice. And there's lots of other designers who have started doing the trees like Liz Matthews and her 12 Days of Christmas trees. The tree is just a great shape. Um, this, oh yeah, this is another one I don't have on uh, cardstock called Button Up. I stitched a couple of these and changed the children's skin tone to match my kids more and their little um, pillows. And I didn't do the whole thing. I think I did the snow angel and maybe the ice skater. What other one did I do? You know, I think I did the snow angel and the ice skater. And they're just finished as little pillows. Um, that I put out in like a dough bullet the holidays with my snow yetis. This is book 172 Christmas favorites originally out in 2011. And so you could stitch this all as one or little um, individuals. This now this one annoys me because I got this one off stash unload. And it said it was um, cardstock, and it's not. So somebody pulled a switcheroo. Um, I don't even think that this one was a Prairie School of Re-Release. I think somebody literally photocopied it because the way the um, the chart is not crisp. But so that really pisses me off. But this was originally from 1997, called Christmas Samplers. Just goes to show there's jerky people, man. You got to be aware. I didn't do anything about it, but people are jerks. This is called Reindeer Roundup, book 182. Originally came out in 2012. Look at that log cabin and all those reindeer. That's so good. This is book number 190 called Happy Christmas. This is one that they did on black fabric. Not that you have to do it on black fabric. And this is 2013. I don't think I would stitch it on black fabric if I stitched it. This one I really like. I think Justine from um, X's and Hoes is working on these. Is the Nordic Holiday Smalls. I think she's working on this. This came out in 2013 really cute i love that stylistically those trees with the positive and negative space and that santa so fun now for all of my um prairie schooler uh collecting you know prairie schooler puts that sick one of those santas out every year i only have two of them <laughs> but um these are the two i have of the prairie school santas um so, obviously, if they put a Prairie School or Halloween out every year, you know I'd have that. Now, I have mentioned in the past that I learned to cross-stitch when I was a kid. There was a, actually a store in my little town I grew up in where you could take classes and they had all everything you need. It was mainly kits and stuff back then. And I didn't realize I had stitched a Prairie Schooler for my parents, and I'm trying to see if I can, I don't think I have the actual one. I'm looking for it, but I don't have it. But I walked into Keepsakes one time years ago and I saw the chart and I was like, oh my God, I stitched this like 20 freaking years ago or whatever for my parents. And it's this same sort of format, but it's, um, but it's flowers. Um, this is called Holiday Harvest, came out in 92, and, um, you know, it's just these squares with these different, different flowers, and I think there's, I think it's called Garden Harvest or something like that, and I think there's two of them, and I had stitched one of them for my parents, and I kind of, since my, after my mom died and my dad moved, I'm sure he threw it away, um, but I wish I still had that, it would have been funny to look at, um, and um, so I at least want to find the chart. 
this, so this is a farmer's market, the same sort of layout. Look at those veggies. That would be really fun in a kitchen. This came out in 1993. Here is Prairie Schooler book number 61. We're getting far back there. This is um, Garden Alphabet from 1997. Look at that. You can see it, it's all the whole alphabet with different um, fruits and veggies in there. And then this is the garden alphabet, the same sort of idea as the other one. This is from 99 with just different veggies in the alphabet. The next one is, okay, hold on, we're getting close to where... The ones Liz sent. I'm going to see if we have, I have these. Prairie Seasons. Okay, this is Four Seasons. Okay, so this is Prairie Seasons. Um, this came out in 95. And this autumn one, of course, is my favorite. Look at that squirrel tail and look at that jack-o'-lantern. Amazing. Okay, so this is the one that Liz had sent me. So I do have two copies. So I'll be happy to put one of these up as a giveaway. So if you stuck through this whole video, this is your reward. If you would like to enter to win this, um, it's called Spring Miniatures. And this would be awesome for smalls. There are, let's see, bunnies, chickens, roosters, flowers, geese, a lamb. So, um, say, uh, spring, if you would like to be entered to win, and I will give one of these copies away, um, in my next video. Okay. So, um, there's your reward for sticking through the whole thing. The next one is book number 23. Look at this. And this was $4 when it came out and the year of 1989 a prairie year two and this one actually folds out. i don't want to show you the chart oh this one has a chart on the back but it folds out three pieces which is kind of unusual for a prairie schooler chart so um they're all the i guess because there's um a year so it's 12 different um each month has a different thing. This is book number four, uh, no, 22, Borders and Corners. Um, and this just has like different, you know, when your little hand towel that you're gonna put out in the guest bathroom that only guests can use to wipe their hands, little patterns to adorn those. Okay, I promise I'm at the end here. I have one more little series to show you of Prairie Schoolers, and then I am done. And the rest of this book is birds of a feather out of print charts that I have been coveting, but I don't have anywhere near as many. Um, some of the birds of a feather charts I have stitched, friends have lent me. So I don't have many that are actually on cardstock, but someday I'll be happy to show you. It'll be a much shorter flip through. But this little fairy series by the Prairie Schooler, and these are like on those quarter size sheets. So it's this little pixie riding a bunny. Let's see, do they have names? It just says 1997 Pixie Fairy. And this is 1995 Pixie Fairy. And she's actually sewing. Look at that big needle. And um, she's got fabric and a hoop. Isn't that sweet? And this is, just says Pixie Fairy. This Maybe this was the first one. This is 1994, so this must be the first one. And she's on a little bird. Sowing some seeds, it looks like. She's scattering seeds. And then I love this guy on the snail. This is 1996 Prairie Fairy. Riding the snail, watering the plants. So that was my... Prairie Schooler cardstock mostly collection. Thank you for indulging me. I hope that some of you 
found some items that you want to um, go and stitch or look for. And um, if you want to win one of these copies, what did I say? Say spring, spring. And um, thank you so much for watching. And um, Edda is working on another video, so I'll post that also too. So thank you so much and um, enjoy stitching. Oh, wait, wait, Albus needs to say goodbye. Albie, you gonna say goodbye to the peoples? I know, you're so sleepy, so sleepy. Oh my goodness. Can you say goodbye to the peoples? Say bye, peoples. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Bye.